Okay, in this video we're going to go over number 5 from the 2017 Calc BC exam, and uh, I don't really know how to classify this. You're given a function, and you're asked to do a bunch of things with it, so uh, let's dig in. So first thing, we're told f of x is 3 over 2x squared minus 7x plus 5, and the first question, find the slope of the line tangent to f at x equals 3. So uh, we're going to have to find a derivative, so f prime, well first I'm going to rewrite f of x. I'm going to bring the denominator up to the negative first power. So um, it's 3, the quantity, and then to the negative first. And now I'm just going to kind of chain rule. So f prime is going to be, um, bring the exponent down, you're going to get negative 3, quantity uh, 2x squared minus 7x plus 5 to the negative 2, and then times the derivative of that, which is 4x minus 7. So that's f prime. And I don't really need to simplify that. It turns out in part b I probably will need to simplify that. But right now I don't. I just need to um, evaluate this at 3. So to evaluate it at 3, I'm going to replace every x that I see with 3. And it gives me this. And you could actually leave that if you wanted to. I don't really like leaving answers like that. So I went ahead and I simplified it. And in simplifying it, which is risking losing a point, um, I got negative 15 over 4. So um, that's the answer to part A. And let's move to part B. In part B, we are looking for critical points on the open interval from 1 to 2.5. So critical points on the open interval from 1 to 2.5. So I'm going to simplify the derivative, um, which means dropping that quantity into the denominator. Um, so I get negative 3, the quantity, 4x minus 7. So while that's being written out, um, the denominator is uh, does have discontinuities at 1 and 2.5, but the interval we're looking at is only between those. And since the denominator is squared, it's always going to give you a positive anyway. Um, so when I look for a critical point... Um, the numerator, so f prime of x equals 0, gives me x equals 7 fourths. Um, so that's definitely a critical point. And then potential critical points are also at 1 and at 5 halves, um, because that's when f prime is undefined. So undefined when x is um, 1, and also when x is uh, 2.5. And the issue with those is that they're not in the interval, so it doesn't make a difference. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a sign chart, um, which is for f prime. So 7 fourths goes on it, and 1 and 2.5 go on it. And um, so if I plug in something really close to 1, like 1.01, .01, you basically get uh, 4 minus 7, which is negative times negative. So you end up with positive here. And then if you plug in something like 2.5, you definitely get a negative overall. So now I'm just going to summarize and say that at x equals 7 fourths, which is the critical point, f prime changes from positive to negative, so there's a relative maximum. So um, f of x has a relative maximum at x equals 7 fourths because f prime changes positive to negative there. Okay, so that's part b. Um, if you've taken bc and you've been paying attention, you might have suspected that this question would involve partial fractions. Uh, it could have, but instead they just gave it to you. So they tell you that 3 over 2x squared minus 7x plus 5 decomposes into... 2 over 2x minus 5 minus 1 over x minus 1, and then they ask you to evaluate an improper integral. So improper integrals are pretty much normal integrals, except the notation is important and you end up with limits involved. So what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate this limit, but what we do immediately is we change it to look like the limit as b approaches infinity of the integral from 5 to b of the integrand. So we write this down. And then, uh, as you know, when you do partial fractions, you end up with tons of natural logs in your antiderivatives, um, and that's going to happen here. So limit as b approaches infinity of, um, if we integrate 2 over 2x minus 5, um, everything works out, so it's just the natural log of the absolute value of 2x minus 5, and then it's going to be minus, we're going to integrate 1 over x minus 1, which is already perfect, so it's the natural log of the absolute value of x minus 1, and then from 5 to b. And uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, combine things, I think. So we have natural log minus a natural log, so I'm going to turn that into uh, the natural log of 2x minus 5 over x minus 1. I dropped the absolute value there because when x is greater than 5, um, both of the things we're taking the natural log of are already positive, so you don't actually need absolute value at that point. So uh, fundamental theorem here, uh, is going to give me, I'm just going to plug in b, so the limit as b approaches infinity, natural log with b substituted in, 
gives us this, and then uh, minus, and when you plug in 5, you just get numbers, so minus the natural log of 5 over 4. If you actually take this limit, um, you just end up with the natural log of 2, because 2b minus 5 over b minus 1, if b approaches infinity, just gives you 2 over 1, so 2. So this is um, acceptable. You could totally leave your answer like this. It's natural logs and they're subtraction, so you might choose to turn it into division inside the log. If you do that, you'll look at something like this. Um, I would say the AP exam is maybe not the time to be messing around with these rules, but you know, you can go for it. Um, and if you're crazy, you can uh, flip the fraction over and make a negative. I don't know why you would do that, but you could. Um, so we showed that this integral converges because we got a value. Um, the next question basically says to determine whether the series um, from 5 to infinity of f of n, so instead of f of x, it's f of n, converges or diverges. We need to state the conditions of the test we're used for determining convergence or divergence. So it just says state the conditions. Um, and so this, I feel like by having done part C, they really set us up to just use the integral test on this thing. So I'm going to say the conditions of the integral test. So f of x is um, positive termed. It's continuous, um, and it's also decreasing on the interval from 5 to infinity. Um, so I'm, I'm not really justifying those, but uh, if you think about it, uh, the denominator, once you're past 2.5, is always positive. So you have 3 divided by a positive number. So the function is definitely positive when x is greater than 5. Um, it's continuous because you're past the discontinuities. Um, and it's definitely decreasing because the numerator is a constant and the denominator is actually growing, so it must be decreasing. So I didn't really justify them, I just stated them, but all of them do make sense. And then, uh, so that's the setup for using the integral test. We already did all the work. So we know that the integral from 5 to infinity of f of x dx converges. Um, and the reason we know that is that we did part c. So I'm going to mention that just so a reader would know that the work is in part c. Um, and then we can draw our conclusion. So therefore, uh, the sum from 5 to infinity of f of n uh, also converges, and it converges by the integral test. And I'm pretty sure that's all you need to do there. So if you didn't think to do the integral test, I have a feeling that some of you might have used a limit comparison to 1 over n squared. Um, and if that's the case, I, I think you can still get all the points. Um, you just get a positive finite value, which means that both series do the same thing, and 1 over n squared is a p-series with p equals 2, so it converges. Um, I think that would also be suitable. But you did all that work in Part C, clearly a setup to use the integral test in Part D. So I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.